Greetings, and welcome to episode 36. If my voice sounds a little weird, it's because I have a uh, gauze pack in my mouth because I've had two teeth removed, and that's why I didn't make a video yesterday. I'm not in excruciating pain as of yet. I was, which is why I went to have the teeth pulled out. But, uh, yeah, my voice may sound a little weird, and uh, feels weird talking with this, the gauze pack in there. But uh, yeah, this is uh, episode 36, and today's episode is about relationships, and not just, ooh, excuse me, not just relationships that most people can relate to, like boyfriend, girlfriend, husband, wife, uh, child, parent, child, child, whatever. Just as, like, even relationships with the self. I'm having a rough time with my relationship to an aspect of myself at this point and uh, hopefully talking about that will help, help resolve some issues but yeah today hopefully we can get this uh, video out before uh, my pain meds start kicking in and making me even more loopy than I already am Lala. anyway <laughs> if you're ready let's get started now sit back, relax, and enjoy. So, relationships. The first relationship I want to touch base with is my higher self. And the higher self is an aspect of the self so it's pretty much I'm mad at me because I was under the impression that if I needed something if I needed help I could ask my higher self and I would get whatever help I needed and the help didn't come and more than it made me angry I was hurt I'm not one to ask for help and then when I finally I hear this, oh, ask for help, you don't have to do it yourself, and finally I ask for help and the help didn't come, and the explanation to me seemed invalid, and I was hurt, heartbroken, and I'm like at odds with myself, which is probably the most horrible thing that can happen to a person, and I am, I am literally beside myself haha -ha. because I I like refuse to connect with this anymore and it's I know it's not gonna last forever and I'm just being petty and all this and that but I'm hurt I'm hurt that an aspect of myself would refuse me service and maybe I was asking too much and I don't know but It hurts that I would tell myself, no, there has to be a reason, and I know there has to be a reason. I wouldn't say no to anyone without good reason. <coughs> so there has to be a reason that I would tell myself no. <laughs> it, just, it just seems really odd. I would never in a million years have imagined that I would tell me no if I had need. I mean, I wouldn't tell any of you no without, like I said, without really, really good reason. And that has, in effect, caused severe damage to my relationship with myself, with that aspect of me. And uh, I guess it really doesn't matter because we weren't, like, really close and tight anyway. It was just a matter of, like... Like having a dog or a hamster. You're me. Whatever. I never really nurtured a bond with myself in that aspect. Only the lower aspect. So maybe that's what he's saying. Maybe he's saying, you know, you, you never call on me and all of a sudden I'm supposed to jump whenever you ask. And I can get that. I, I get that. I get that. But don't tell me I should ask for help and then don't help. That's... That's bullshit, you know? If you're going to call me up on the phone and say, hey, you never asked for help, ask for help. And then the one day I call and ask me, you say, I, I can't do it. 
And fuck you. Honestly, fuck you. I ain't gonna call you no more. <laughs> And like I said, maybe I'm being petty, maybe I'm being selfish. I can accept that. I can I can accept that down here on this level, being petty is usually done on accident. So I just might be missing some of the information I need to see it properly. But until I get that information, fuck him. <laughs> be perfectly honest and I'm, I, I can, I'll am i be the first one to tell you I'm approaching this totally wrong but yeah I feel that slighted, that broken hearted like someone very important to me denied me and uh, and maybe you can't relate, maybe you, maybe you can relate on a more emotional separation level like love of another person that's what it feels like like you're your 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 lady fair or your best friend and they say you know if you ever need anything call me and then you call them and they're just they're not down they're not there for you and you're, you're just like uh, it's more hurtful than than it makes you angry and then what do you do what are you left with I just I mean just be because it hurt it made me angry it's like dude how could you do that to me I've never been hurt more by anybody ever than by myself. I feel like I've been left to die. And like I said, I know, I understand that there's probably more to it. And I'm, lack, I'm lacking the information. I need to see it clearly. But as long as I'm lacking the information... I'm not going to see it clearly. How about getting me the information I need, you know? I just, I can't, can't function on half information or half of the information I need or none of the information I need. And it would seem to me... that this is one of the most important relationships in my life and that's including I'm married that's including I have children and this is my relationship to myself is to me the most important relationship there could be because that's the basis for pretty much every other relationship if I'm not good with me how can I be good with anybody else like let's get into some more uh, some less esoteric relationships like my relationship with my wife uh, most people when they approach a relationship they they're it's it's not so much what can I get out of it that's that's more of a friendship that starts like an acquaintanceship starts out as what can I get out of it and after you start to feel around and you see what you're getting out of it then it becomes wow this you know what does he provide to me and what do I provide to him and this is not a, a non-material provision you know he brightens what corner or she brightens what corner or I brighten what corner of their life and then acquaintanceship you know slowly over time evolves into friendship which even the acquaintanceship is a relationship it's just it's at its either beginning stages and some people just never get past the acquaintanceship stage that's just the level of relationship you two have agreed upon but I was talking about my wife and you when you have a spouse wife girlfriend whatever when it first starts out most people oh you gotta have things in common and you got this and you got that and blah 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 slow down ease up my wife and I have almost nothing in common other than the fact that we love one another and we make it work based on that I can't say nothing in common we both love to read uh, we both love movies we both love our children uh, we don't dress alike we don't listen to the same music we don't like the same forms of entertainment ie different TV shows we don't even really watch TV but when we used to 
she liked different TV shows than me. And it was easier for her to say, hey, come check this out, than it was for me to say, hey, come check this out. But it works. It works in that we love each other and that that's what we nurture. We don't nurture the, hey, maybe try this. Hey, maybe try that. And then because I see that that's a point of contention in a lot of people's, ooh, excuse me, in a lot of people's relationships is the so-and-so won't give so -and such and such a chance because they don't like it. Well, don't focus on the things they don't like. Focus on the things they do. Focus on the way you caress their face because they love that. Focus on that. That's what I focus on. I focus on the things I do that she absolutely loves. The things that she's not down with, I'll put it out there. Because it wouldn't be fair of me to at least give her the opportunity to change her mind and say, I'll give it a shot. And same likewise for her. She just puts it out there and gives me the opportunity to say, I'll give it a shot. Because it wouldn't be fair not to. But as far as nurturing, you nurture, what would you call it, the fundal, the fundal, <laughs> the fundamental pillars of your foundation are not going to be what music you listen to. Because when it all comes down and the relationship's almost over and you're fighting to salvage it, you're not going to say, well, we like the same music. No, you're going to say, but our hearts connect on such a level. Why is any of that other shit important? When they say opposites attract, sometimes that's what they mean. Usually it's the energetic opposite. Like she's positive, he's negative. She's more masculine, he's more feminine. Or whichever the mix. But that's usually what they mean. But in this case... We have so much in common, it's just not the explosive, immediate, outward expressions that we have in common. And I'm not going to lie, some of the things we don't have in common have almost killed our relationship. <laughs> but for the most part, they do nothing. If it works, if I can talk her into do something I like or she can talk me into do something she likes, it enhances the experience. But beyond that, it has nothing to do with how well our relationship is going. It's developing an understanding of the person that's in the relationship with you. Like understanding that females are quite literally a completely different species than man and I can't approach her like I would approach a man she's a tomboy don't 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 get it twisted but she's still a female and I cannot approach her like a man would approach a man I have to approach a man I have to approach a man <laughs> hey hey no I have to approach her like I'm approaching a female any other female I have to bear in mind that no matter how sweet she's being now, that that's exactly the amount of evil she's capable of. <laughs> and likewise, however evil she's acting now, that's exactly the amount of goodness and joy she's capable of. I have to bear these things in mind. Now, for most people, the little side trip stuff, oh, we like the same shows, we like the same music, we dress the same. That stuff goes a long way towards wanting to nurture the foundation pillars. But imagine if you didn't have that. You'd have to actually try on an emotional level to maintain those foundation pillars because you don't have oh we dress alike you don't have the the that that sense that where am I gonna find another one like this she's in it same as I am well I can find another one we don't have anything common anyway <laughs> not not the not the main outward expression is what what I'm getting at 
what we do have in common makes everything else seem obsolete and irrelevant. Because when we do have a chance to come together, when we do have a chance to say, hey, try this, hey, try that, nine times out of ten, because we already have that nurtured emotional connection, we don't have a, tr we don't have a problem trying each other's things out. And I've noticed that if I give it a shot, I like it. And I've noticed that when she gives it a shot, she likes it. Hey, Mikey, she likes it. <laughs> and these things play into even basic friendships. You don't have to just stick to your own pigeonhole. Oh, I only hang out with dudes that listen to heavy metal or, or whatever. Country or whatever. If you are trying to connect with someone on an emotional level, what they do as an outward expression of who they are shouldn't matter. It should be about that bond. That, hey man, you want to go to the movies? Hey man, want to go have a beer? Hey man, you know, if someone is trying and to maintain that emotional connection with you, and you deny that, and then later bemoan the fact that, well, so-and-so stopped coming by. Will you stop trying to nurture that connection because he didn't dress like you? He didn't listen to the music you listened to. He didn't like his car or her. This could be two females trying to become friends. And I'm not talking about dating. I'm just talking about friends. And this isn't me saying that, well, I'm against homosexuality. I I'm speaking from my point of view. I'm hetero. I am 100% not against homosexuality. But you have to approach every relationship with the same eyes. Emotional connection. Now granted, like I said, most, I'm going to say 90% of all relationships start with a what can they do for me point of view. Even if it's not something material, what can they do for me? And, well, let me rephrase that. It starts with a, what can I do for them? But still non-material. What can I do for them? I can make them the happiest person in the world. I can bring them the moon and the stars. I can be better than their ex or whatever. That's what you're, and you, and you, and you advertise it to them. Settle it first, and then it, the, then you get the slow build up to finally it's a full blown ad. Hey, new and improved me, better than your last one. <laughs> Which is kind of funny. <laughs> but I mean, as it, it's just like friendship. If you noticed. Any other relationship starts the same way as a friendship, just two guys or two girls hanging out. Repetition. You try to be there. Hey, you want to go out? Hey, you want to go out? Want to catch a beer? Want to sit at home? Want to do something? Just whatever you're going to do, make sure you involve me in it. <laughs> Dating is a little different because you don't want to scare the person off and you want to seem like the right person and you don't want to do this and you do want to do that and you do want to do this and you do want to do that. But friendship, you're, you're not really so concerned because you, this person will never see you naked. And your bad habits should be one of the bonuses in a friendship. <laughs> That's why I say it's important that my wife and I are actually friends. Because some of the things that would be deal breakers at the beginning of a relationship, they're part of the package now. It's like, dude. When did you stop belching in front of me? When did you stop farting in front of me? You know what I mean? Because we like to make our little jokes, and without that, some of the little, some of the little, uh, you know, festive moments will be gone without the bad habits. Because we make fun of each other about them. You know that that's part of it, and people people don't seem to realize that in a relationship, you have to be yourself. Because if let's say. And we're not even talking about dating. We're just talking about two people just trying to become friends. If you leave out all those shenanigans, 
at the beginning of the relationship when you guys have been hanging out a couple of months, say six months, a year, and then all of a sudden shenanigans pop up, they're going to think you're fucking weird, and they're going to be like, well, whoa, who's this person? And that the same thing goes for a, 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 a love relationship where you're actually dating. Don't leave out the shenanigans. The shenanigans, in my opinion, that's the best part. And you have to understand where I come from within the relationship I'm in now. When we first got together, she had no shenanigans. None. It was all me. It's like... Not a sense of humor. She had a sense of humor. It was a little skew. Like... At first, she used to take all my jokes personally. Personally, like I know our personal slights against her, and I stopped. I'd stop making jokes until finally, like a couple months later, she was like, "Are you mad at me?" I was like, "No." She says, "You don't make those little jokes anymore." I said, "Because they they upset you." She said, "I'm I know, but I'm working on it." And from there on, I toned it down, but I kept with the jokes. But her shenanigans. I how do I explain this? It's like. When a human being is born, they have this huge tank of shenanigans. It's like a liquid or a gas. And mine was full to the brim and has never emptied, never fallen below full. And her tank was almost completely dry. No shenanigans whatsoever. And she learned, literally learned shenanigans from me. And now... Not only is her tank bigger than mine, she's almost better at shenanigans than I am. <laughs> it's very refreshing, kind of. I don't like being beaten at my own game, but it's good to know that she has at least as good a sense of humor as I do and knows how to back it up with shenanigans. But the same thing for a regular just friendship. If you go out and you tell these people, you're, that's what you're doing. You're telling these people, I have no shenanigans. I'm straight-laced. This is what you get. And then one day, boom, shenanigans. They're going to be like, what, what the, where, where the fuck did that come from? And they're going to think you're weird. And they might back off of you because they're not used to your shenanigans. You throw those shenanigans in the first day. You let them know, hey, hey shenanigans. Let's see how many times I say shenanigans for the end of the video. Shenanigans. <laughs> and it's it's what I I find it amusing that when you're just trying to make friends with someone, there's no eggshells. There's you just throw the eggs at the person. Ha <laughs> ha. But when you're trying to be in love, it's like eggshells. Everything has to be perfect. And watch me tippy toe. Tippy toe. Tippy toe. Tippy -toe. And see, that's why it's better to be friends with who you're in love with. They say, it's devolved into friendship. It hasn't devolved. You're right where you're supposed to be. Now, instead of walking on eggshells, egg you can throw eggs at each other, and it's hilarious. <laughs> oh, pardon me. I'm going to light my cigarette. But, I mean, if you have kids, I mean, take a step back. Watch your kids. Watch the way they interact. You'll notice that when your kids make friends, the eggshells last about an hour. If that. After that first hour, they're, they're chucking eggs at each other. They're not walking on eggshells. They're, their only reason why they're walking on eggshells is because they just spent two hours throwing eggs at each other. And there's a mess. <laughs> and there's, I'm not talking literally. I'm talking figuratively. I watch my daughters and their friends. And they just, they cut up. They have a blast. And we could learn so much about our interconnectivity and, and friendships just by watching them. They're so brutally honest with one another. Whereas you, you and I... Does this dress make me look big? Why no? You watch your kids. Does this dress make me look big? Yep. But to be honest, you were big anyway. <laughs> I love kids. <laughs>
brutally honest. And God forbid if they learn one of your secrets, oh God, everyone knows it. <laughs> so, but, yeah, it's, it's amazingly crazy and worth every penny to the, the, the watching of the friendship of the children, the being in a friendship as an adult. I mean, they say, they like, I'm thinking back to, I want to say junior high. Because a lot of the people that I was friends with in junior high are now in my social media circle. We don't, I don't live around a lot of them, but these were the people in my life on a daily basis. I went to school, there they were. After school, there they were. Uh, and they say, well, people grow apart. People don't grow apart. What is it that you've done that's made you embarrassed or ashamed? Or what is it about me that you assume that I'm embarrassed or ashamed of that makes it so you don't want to connect with me? Because I'm not embarrassed or ashamed of anything. And if you're not embarrassed or ashamed, let's get back to throwing eggs. We used to chuck eggs at each other all the time. And now you're walking on eggshells? I'm still the same asshole with a, with a sense of humor I was back then. Are you still the same asshole with a sense of humor? Well, I'm more refined. I'm grown up. Well, good for you. Chuck an egg at you. Right in the face. <laughs> you can be refined and grown up in a minute when we're done. <laughs> well, my new friends don't go for that. Fuck them. Let's go to beer. <laughs> And people say, well, how come you don't have friends? I have lived in eight states in three different countries. I have said goodbye to more people than most people will ever say hello to. I'm just done making friends. That's just a fact. I'm done making friends. I'm okay with the ones that I have. It just so happens that the ones that I have, a lot of them don't live anywhere near me. And the ones that do, it's kind of hard now that we're older. It's harder to coordinate. But I have a feeling that once coordination is met and we see what each other have to offer at this stage in our lives, you know, because I carry a dozen and a half eggs around with me wherever I go. And I'll chuck an egg at any motherfucker, whether we know each other or not, because I like to laugh and I like to make sure you're laughing, too. So you're that's what you've been missing. Oh, but what if he's uh, I'm not judging. I don't judge. Do you know why I don't judge? Because I'm not perfect and I've been in your shoes. Maybe not carried your wallet, but I've been in your shoes, you know. You may be the richest man I know. You may be the most educated man I know. You may be whatever. I'm still chucking eggs at you because that's me. That's what made it fun then is chucking eggs at you. Chuck eggs at me. Don't say, well, I feel bad. Because my wallet's bigger than yours. Chuck an egg, motherfucker! It's the equalizer! <laughs> That's what made us equal. Wasn't who our parents was were. Wasn't who our parents were. It wasn't our economic status. What made us equal was that we were willing to throw eggs at each other. Have fun. No matter what. To me, that hasn't changed. If there's something about you that you are embarrassed or ashamed of, well, I made it to this level of life. And now the, the people I keep company with wouldn't appreciate it. Step back. Look at your relationship with these new people. Egg yolk everywhere. But you're saying because you throw eggs with these motherfuckers, you can't throw eggs with me? I'll throw an egg at you just for spite. <laughs> Watch your kids Covered in egg every day And they'll hang out with anyone Yeah they have their favorite But they'll hang out with anyone And they'll do anything Because let's face it Being on earth It's about having fun That's what we're here for Somebody killed that along the way somewhere You have to work and you have to die Blah 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 uh, Kill it. Put those eggs away. That's what we're here for. To experience life and to experience happiness and joy. 
Anyone tells you different ran out of eggs. <laughs> My wife and I, eggs. My kids and I, most of the time, eggs. Because it is very, any one of you that has children knows that it's very hard to be a parent and still be their friend. Because you want so desperately to be accepted by your children and be their friend that they have trouble drawing the line between, hey, they're checking eggs, and, oh, they're bringing the rules. Fuck them. And I don't mean to have to bring the rules, it's just, it's a byproduct of being a parent. If I just let you run amok without boundaries, then I can't really explain it, I can't put it into words. But if you have children, you already know what I'm trying to, what I'm trying to say. But these concepts are very hard to articulate because it, it's, it's an amorphous blob that becomes what it needs to become in the moment that it becomes it. Because that's what kids do. Kids are an amorphous blob that become whatever they need to become when they're doing whatever they're doing. <laughs> and all I can say with certainty, with absolute certainty, is that in any relationship, there has to be a healthy amount of shenanigans. And shenanigans could be different for anybody. Your idea of throwing eggs might not be my idea of throwing eggs. What you consider throwing eggs, I might consider being overly polite. <laughs> but that doesn't mean you're not getting out of what you're doing what I get out of what I'm doing when I'm doing my shenanigans. I said it again, shenanigans. Were you counting? Did you keep did you keep track? I expect at least one of you to leave a count in the comments of how many times I said shenanigans. Shenanigans. My wife and I, the reason why we've lasted twelve years, shenanigans. Throwing eggs, having a blast. And without those moments, I don't think we would have gotten through any of the rough stuff. Same with my kids. If it wasn't for taking the time to chuck a couple of eggs at them, I don't think we'd get through the, the, the rule giver part. And I hate the rule giver part, but it is necessary to establish and maintain those boundaries. And granted, as they get older, as they mature, those boundaries expand, but they want them gone. <laughs> And I, as a parent, I cannot, I cannot foresee just taking down the boundaries altogether. I could be wrong. I'm not saying that I'm the perfect parent. I'm just saying at this point in my life, with my level of understanding, I cannot see just completely removing the boundaries. You say kids need structure and boundaries. Kids just need boundaries. Structure, they kind of don't want structure. They don't want to come home and do the same thing every day and day in and day out. We provide structure for them so they get used to the repetition that they're going to come into later in life of the wake up, go to work, come home, drink a beer, go to bed, wake up, go to work, come home, drink a beer, go to bed. We're setting them up for that, and we're doing it on accident. I don't want my kids set up for that. I want my kids set up for wake up, shenanigans, throw eggs, fuck around, blah, blah, blah. As long as you can make money and pay your bills, I would rather you do that, honestly. Perfectly honest. <laughs> but as long as we live in this broken system, it's our it's my job to prepare you for that repetition, that 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 structure. But even that structure has absolutely nothing to do with boundaries. I'm just trying to teach what is socially acceptable for when you get out of my house and you're into your own house. You need to know what's socially acceptable to every other person out there. But that's my relationship with my kids. And so I've touched base on pretty much every type of relationship I'm either in or have been in for the past 40 years. And I hope that it has helped in some way. But we are getting on past the 30 minute mark. Ooh, hang on. Ooh, excuse me. 
if this video, if you've enjoyed this video and it's helped in any way, shape, or form, or you just enjoyed it, please click click the like button. Ooh, excuse me. Woohoo, piggy. Ooh, excuse me again. Uh, you can also favorite it if you want. Uh, leave a comment down below. List how many times I actually said shenanigans. Shenanigans. <coughs> And then you can hear the next door neighbor lady screaming. I don't know if you can, but I can. And usually, if I can hear through these heads, for these through these headphones, the mic picked it up. <laughs> anyway, if you would like to keep coming back and getting information like this, or you just like the sound of my voice, go ahead and hit the subscribe button. But if my voice sounded messed up today, like I said, I got God's pack had two teeth removed on this side both on this side oh it's like fascinating I remember yeah I remember anyway teeth removed sound of my voice hit subscribe <laughs> but until next time you hang in there <laughs>